Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here at Oracle Open World with Irshad Raihan, and we're going to talk about Vertica Database and what is HP's point of view on big data and how does Vertica fit into that? Sure. Thanks, Jake. Um, so there's a couple of things here. The first thing I want to talk about is when we look at big data, we're not so focused on the big as much as on the data. And, and the reason for that is if, if you're focused on the big, you're missing the point of big data. Storage is getting cheaper, right? So the fact that the data is large is not really the problem uh, from a business standpoint or from an ID standpoint. The problem is the three Vs. You know, you've, you've probably heard of the three Vs when, when you mentioned big data, right? The volume, the variety, and velocity, right? So everything that we're doing to address big data is from a point of view of how do we address the volume? Certainly volume is one piece of it, but it's not everything. The variety, if you think about structured data versus unstructured, right? Unstructured data is already, depends on who you talk to, but uh, you know, anywhere from three to four or five times um, the, the, the amount of structured data, right? It's also growing faster than structured data. So not only is it already bigger than structured data, there's, it's actually growing faster. So HP announced uh, the intent to acquire Autonomy, which is a company that does unstructured data 24-7. That's their thing, right? Uh, the third V is velocity. It's the, the you know, how quickly this data is streaming in. If you look at any of the social media monitors, we have one over here that just has the Twitter feed for HP at this conference, and it's just, just keep going. I mean, this is one vendor at one conference. So there's a ton of information that's coming in to organizations, right? There's, uh, uh, you know, there's chatter between customers about what they're saying about the brand, about what they're saying about the products, features that they're looking for, features that they hate, that product managers would love to get their hands um, into. It's, 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 the problem is, uh, there's just no formalized process of taking that anecdotal data into something that's actionable that a product manager can look at uh, when they're making planning decisions for their product. So uh, to sum it up, we're focused on providing value to customers so they can get more out of the data that they already have. Their data is there, they've got gold nuggets buried in that data. And our, it's our aim to help them get to those nuggets so they can make more actionable decisions based on that data. So. In terms of uh, a real world, uh, world example, what are some uh, pain points that people see around these three Vs? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's different pain points, right? So if you look at businesses, right, the first thing they tell us is time to insight. That's, that's one of the metrics that they're using. How long does it take for a piece of data to enter their organization to the point where a business user can actually make sense of the data, right? That's, uh, that's, that's a business problem. The other problem is opportunity cost because they see their competitors out there doing a lot of stuff with their data and they're getting worried that while we're not doing as much as we could, we're losing out on all this insight that our data has and, and you know, they, they feel like it's, it's just lying around. Data, I like to think of it as, as, as like, like blood in many ways. Blood needs to move. When blood stops moving, you got a problem. When data stops moving, you've got a problem. So what would be like a, a real world example of where uh, insight would be beneficial? Is there, is there a case study that you could point to? Oh, absolutely. There, there's a number of them. So let me take Vertica as an example. Um, if if uh, your viewers were to go to vertica.com, there's a number of case studies of uh, companies trying to do, you know, whether it's financial companies, whether it's online gaming companies, communications companies. Uh, you know, let me give you an example from a communication space where companies are looking at call detail records, CDRs, and trying to figure out patterns between how their consumers make calls to each other and how that can change the calling plans that they offer to their consumers. Uh, another great example is Zynga. I mean, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's just an amazing example in terms of the, the amount of data and the types of analytics that they're running on the fly. So Zynga, what they're essentially doing is, um, the, the way their business model works is to identify mavens who are essentially, uh, I guess they're, they're the game players who um, influence other game players in the way that they buy products and the way that they play the game. And they're able to do this so effectively uh, using analytics on the fly that uh, you know that's been the center of their business model. So using information as a differentiator is becoming very centric to a lot of these types of companies. So you're saying that um, Zynga is able to 
cha shape the way people do customer transactions thanks to the Vertica database? Absolutely. They're able to take those insights on the fly. Now, that's the, that's the key here. As soon as a player makes a purchase or makes any, that does some kind of activity on, on uh, you know, the Farmville website, um, using Facebook, or I guess you can play Farmville outside as well, but as soon as there's some kind of activity, there's all sorts of analytics running in the background uh, to come up with offers that uh, increase the propensity of that player to actively engage in the game more or to purchase uh, more virtual products. So what kind of partnerships does Vertica have to facilitate this uh, sort of movement of data? Absolutely, that's a really good point, Jay, because you know, no one vendor can claim that we've got it all, right? No one can say we are an end-to-end -end solution provider. It's just too broad a space, and there's too many little niche um, spaces in, in there as well. There's, there's partnerships at a number of levels. So firstly, there's partnerships at the solution level. We're partnering with Microsoft and a number of uh, different solutions, starting from the business decision appliance, which is geared more towards SMBs, uh, small uh, medium businesses, all the way to a very powerful uh, a, a data warehouse um, solution, the, the EDW, Enterprise Data Warehouse. We are also teaming up with SAP on their SAP HANA appliance, and so we have an addition that's available on um, HP hardware. We also have a number of solutions for um, Oracle customers that are running either uh, Oracle Database or OBIEE Plus um, solutions. And of course, we have our own um, Vertica solution. Um, the other partnership that we have is as far as services. Again, like I mentioned, BI, more so than any other space in IT, is very services driven. You've got to have a, a big services wrapper around, around solutions because it's not enough to uh, install a solution and walk away. There's a ton of plumbing and wiring and a lot of hand holding to the point where uh, those insights are available to business users. Back to the time to insight that we talked about. So you need to be very closely engaged with these services partners during implementation. It's, it's not about you know, an afterthought, pulling them in at a later point. You've got to uh, have them very actively engaged uh, during services. The third um, point I want to make here is data integration. You know, if you, if you think about, um, again, like I said, there's, um, a, th there's a, a vacuum of, of data integration uh, in a lot of the vendors that offer uh, BI solutions. And you've got to play nice with uh, the big uh, data integration partners out there, and HP does, absolutely. We have great relationships, you know, lasting many years. Also, um, like I said, we, we actively engage. Uh, it's not just, we, we don't come together just at, at a customer site. We're working off the sites, we're learning as we go. We're, um, you know, we're, this space is evolving so quickly, um, it's, it's hard to keep up, and, and we're learning as we go. We're uh, taking all that, what the lessons learned, and putting it back into the solutions that we offer. So, you know, in sum, we have a partnerships with a number of the players, even on the show floor, we, you know, we partner with a number of these players uh, to, to provide the best possible solutions for end customers. And now, just a, as sort of a clarifying point, Vertica is not necessarily a replacement for any and all other database operations. It's, it's an augmentation of, of existing database needs, correct? Right. Well, it could function as its own warehouse or data mart solution, but you're right. Um, in a lot of cases, what we're seeing is we don't want you to rip and replace what you already got, right? Uh, you've either got a, a, a use case for something real-time analytics or something that is uh, super fast and that's if it, when you run it on your warehouse it just, it just brings the warehouse down because think about it most BI systems today are canned queries you know your quarterly and your weekly reports etc right uh, if you have someone running ad hoc queries which could be you know complex joins or aggregates or scans or table lookups or what have you across thousands of tables there's a good chance you'll bring, you know, you may not bring the system down, but you could significantly affect response time um, adversely, right? So you're right, you could uh, plug in Vertica as a, as a Terramart or a Supermart or Datamart, there's a number of terms out there, but essentially a satellite to your, your existing warehouse where you run the types of analytics that, um, that it's so well suited for. All right, well, Rashad, thanks for your time. Absolutely, thanks, Jake.